Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the third part of the Scum Skill Guide, and today we are going to be covering Dexterity, okay? Now, Dexterity, just like last time, okay, um, we can look at a character with Dexterity of 5 later, okay? But when it comes to Dexterity, the biggest changes that you get to your character, before we look at the skills, is that your, um, your Weight, of course, changes, okay? Um, this character's got dexterity of 1, so he weighs 90.2 kilograms. If you take a character with a dexterity of 5, and remember, um, survivors, all my all my characters have stand, the other skills are standard, okay? So the only differences that we have is the dexterity, and I'm not taking any skills to affect the numbers either as well, okay? So we're just looking at the raw attribute, of dexterity so yeah from 90.2 kilograms you go down to 70.5 uh, 75.2 kilograms and from a body fat percentage of 23.5 percent you go down to 21.3 so not a massive difference there and then um storage fat goes from 16.6 to 12.3 okay Quite a bit, but also not a massive. The biggest changes that we get is you go from a walking speed of 5.6 to 6.9 kilometers per hour, and then you go from a jogging speed of 11.2 kilometers per hour to 13.7, which is starting to look better. But when it comes to the running speed, this is definitely where dexterity stands out because, as we know, if we put points into our running, um, in our, into our running skill and con, in constitution, then we can already run quite a lot faster. Okay. But just by adding, just by going from one to five dexterity, our running speed is going from 20.4 kilometers per hour, 20.4 kilometers per hour to 24.9 kilometers per hour. Okay. A whole, yeah, you know, that's a whole 4.5. Um, difference okay which is almost it's almost like 20 almost like 25 percent or 20 percent increase that you get in speed there so when it comes to dexterity speed is uh is the most important factor okay now you can go look at um devolver digitals videos or the scum devs where they show you an example of a pistol and i've tested this with various characters i've created like 200 or 300 single player characters and um, I just went to the developer's videos to refresh my memory because I couldn't really see a difference. Like if I took a character with advanced pistols, when I put my dexterity up to five, I didn't really visually see any difference. You know, um, a character without a, ri a rifle skill, without a handgun skill still feel very slow to me. But until I increased that handgun skill and that rifle skill, um, I could see a massive difference in speed, okay, like a massive difference. But then when I went from 3 to 5 dexterity, I couldn't really notice the difference. So I literally had to take a character of 1 dexterity, you know, with advanced pistols and a, car a character with 5 dexterity, just like they did in the, in the, de in the developer um, uh, videos. And yes, on on the digital, you know, Devolver Digital um, YouTube channel where they show that, it says there in the seconds it's a one, it's like a one second difference. Okay, so all that you guys have to know is that the biggest difference that dexterity has on your character is your speed overall, your speed of doing things. Okay, not really crafting things because that's, you know, that's connected to your survival speed. It does make your character faster, but um, your skills in your character makes about 80% of the difference. Okay, when it comes to the dexterity skill, I'm almost saying, uh, I'm almost saying that the, that your skills, you know, affect 90% of your, of the speed that you do it at. And then the dexterity adds about 10%. So, um, of course, your calorie usage, okay, goes down by about 20%, okay? A character with one dexterity uses 20% more calories than a character with five um, dexterity. 
So not a major difference there either. Okay, that, it has a weight difference. I mean, goodness, you're weighing uh, 15 kilograms more. Okay, so your character is going to look better. But when it comes to speed, it's, it's basically the running. A character with high dexterity will always be able to run away from a character with lower dexterity. Um, or catch a person with lower dexterity. Okay, that's where it becomes very applicable. Um, I don't really care what what the other character's wearing on him. We take two naked characters, you know, running after each other. I'm trying to catch you. I'll always catch you if I've got higher dexterity. Doesn't matter if both of us have advanced running in the Constitution attribute, okay? I will always catch you and I'll always be able to get away from you. So that for me is the biggest difference with dexterity. But where dexterity becomes extremely important is right here. Okay, the thievery, driving, demolition, throwing, and stealth skill. Now, before we start at thievery, I want to give you guys a little bit of a glimpse of um, what we're going to be doing after we've covered the skill guide, and it will be the leveling guide for every skill. Okay, so I will give you the fastest way to level all the skills in every single attribute. Okay. And today, we're just going to have some fun with um, the throwing skill, okay? And I thought I'd just give you a glimpse of the throwing skill, okay? A bit of a preview of the throwing skill, and uh, because it's in dexterity. So all I'm going to do now is um, just spawn in a bunch of fat puppets. And then I'm just going to press G. Come on guys, what are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? Stand still, man. Okay, so all I'm doing here is I've got a hiking backpack with a bunch of small stones. Okay, you guys know that small stones isn't too difficult to find. And I'm just going to throw the stones in the backpack at them. It would have been a bit easy if I'd just spawned in one. But let's just throw all the stones that we have here. Okay, so we cleared out the stones there. Okay, and we've got 21% in throwing. Okay, we earned 2,000 skill points in throwing. Just with that. Okay, so that's 21%. Now, I told you I'm going to show you how to level the skills up um, the fastest way possible. Okay, so let me give you a little bit of a glimpse of where we are going when it comes to technical guidance for you guys okay ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed that glimpse like i said after the skill guide i will be giving you an in-depth um, skill leveling guide and it won't only be just how to level up every single skill it will be how to level up every single skill to the f the fastest way possible okay so if, you, if that's something that interests you, click that sub and like button for me and I'll highly appreciate it. Okay, so what we've got here is three doors, okay? The one door has got a, um, a bronze lock on, okay? A rusty bronze lock. The next door has got a silver lock on and the third door has got a golden lock on, okay? So when it comes to thievery, um, to put it plainly to you guys, you will be able to open every lock in on the map with no thievery skill, except for the kill box. Um, you'll still be able to open it with no skill. It will just be extremely, extremely difficult, okay? But you won't have many problems figuring out the thievery skill with, um, you know, if you've got no thievery skill, you won't have a problem with opening normal lo lockers you know in in the airdrop or in the police station or whatever it might be you might find it a bit difficult in the beginning but it take it's very quick to um to figure that out so the thing that we're going to look at today is again we've just got standard um 
dexterity here, okay? Because we already we've already seen what difference dexterity makes. Now we're going to look at what different skills make, okay? So the first skill um, that we're going to look at today is thievery, okay? So we've got no thievery skill. So what we're going to try and do now is open this lock um, with no thievery skill. It's a bra branch lock, okay? This is what you're going to get in the kill box, and this is what you're going to get when you try and raid people, okay? So we're going to go in here. So this is no thievery skill. So the first thing that we can see is three seconds okay that's the first thing that we can see we've got three seconds to to break this lock okay and i'm not great at lock picking but let's just see how long it takes me to find a sweet spot um on a bronze lock but the first thing we're going to look at is how many times can i tap the f key how many times can i try and turn the lock before the bobby pin breaks okay so it's one two three four five six okay so that was six one two three four five six six tries okay and then it breaks it again one two three four five okay let's go one two three four five six okay six tries to break the bobby pin now what we do is we take a normal lock pick okay and we see how many tries it takes to break it now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so it's seven tries here. One, two, okay. Come on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. <laughs> Sorry guys, it's not using um, these automatically. So we've only got four tries with this. One, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So you're getting more tries with it before it breaks. Okay. One. Okay, there we're going back to the body pin. So we can see that we get one more try. Now if we go to an, an advanced lock pick, okay, then we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so clearly we can see we're getting one more try. Okay, it's not the end of the world. That's, of course, if you're not tapping the button, like if I'm just going, okay, it's still going to break. It's still going to break. But I have to tap it because I've only got six taps with a bobby pin to get to the right place. And I've only got seven, you know, seven tries with the lock pick, and I've only got eight tries with an advanced lock pick. Okay? So it's just it's just the time that it takes to break, which makes that difference. And now, because we've figured out that, you know, it just gives you more tries. It doesn't make a, you know, it's it's not really the end of the world. But I mean, more tries, you know, is more tries. And the big thing that you guys must remember here is on a bronze lock, it might not seem that bad, okay? But I'm going to show you now on a, on a gold lock. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So it breaks on six. Now let's take a bobby pin. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Let's try the bobby pin again. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Advanced. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So it's five, six, seven. Okay. So. The, the biggest thing here is with the golden lock, you're going to, you're not going to be able to turn the lock a lot. So those extra chances with every single try makes a big difference. Okay. That makes a big difference at the end of the day. But one thing that I want you guys to know is that you can lock pick with anything really. Okay. The, the more advanced lock picks are just better. Um, for me, I have tried to test if the advanced, you know, the advanced lock pick makes the lock sweet spot bigger, but I haven't really noticed that. Okay. And I'm only going to trust the dev 
if a dev tells me an advanced lockpick makes the sweet spot better because according to me only your thievery skill makes that sweet spot bigger and the fact that you're not wearing any gloves because as you can see when I go into the lockpicking game I'm getting a white glove there at the bottom okay as soon as I wear gloves it's gonna it's gonna give me a warning sign there with the gloves and the gloves makes the sweet spot smaller as well and you can wear protective gloves because people put shock protection on their doors and of course in the kill box you're gonna get shocked as well but as soon as you wear the gloves it makes the sweet spot smaller okay so you're not receiving damage but it's going to take you a heck of a lot longer to find that sweet spot okay so lock picking without gloves is very important i know a lot of you like wearing gloves but please guys remove the gloves when you're lock picking that will increase um it as well okay so this is no skill i just want to show you the guy uh, the guys the difference here okay this is a bronze a bronze lock and i'm going to be doing my ritual here to try and see if i can open this thing Okay, so I can still open a bronze lock, okay, with some skill. Now let's go look at the, the, the silver lock, okay. And those eight, those two extra tries really comes in when it starts turning because I need, I need more bumps. And it's very difficult to release your your finger when it starts turning, um, you know, not breaking it. So as, now you guys can see the difference between between bronze and silver. Okay, the the sweet spot is really really small. So I'm gonna have to go for smaller little chunks here to try and get that sweet spot. And the seconds, guys, the seconds is a major thing for me. The seconds is a major, major thing for me. Okay, so I'm going to struggle with this for a very long time. And of course, if the guy had two um, advanced shock protections on here, you know, I would have been in some deep trouble by now. But, okay, so with no thievery skill, you can still open a bronze lock, okay, with some skill. Um, yeah, and that's it. But the three seconds is a big thing. Now, let's go all the way to advanced, okay? Instead of going through every single step um, systematically, let's just look at the major differences. And I'm sure you're going to see a difference with the sweet spot, definitely. Okay, boys, we're back with the exact same character. This time, he's just got a thievery, he's got an advanced thievery skill. And remember, when your attribute is three at least, okay? You need at least three strength, three constitution, dexterity or intelligence then you can get to advanced plus in that skill okay if you don't three is seen as the average if you've got below average attribute points in a certain skill then you can't get to advanced plus okay so um what i want to show you guys now is that i've just got a backpack with 80 screwdriver uses and i've got i think six times one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen okay so that is 18 78 so i've got 78 uses with the advanced lock peak and then 80 uses with a screwdriver okay so now let's see with that advanced lock peak we saw how difficult it was with no skill so let's see what changes now when we try and 
rock pick this. Oh, sorry guys, I've got no fame. <laughs> you can't, you can't, uh, you can't lock pick if you don't if you don't have fame points. Okay, so I'm just gonna give myself a thousand fame here. Okay, so now we can another tip there for you guys. You can't lock pick without fame. It takes about one fame every time you try and lock pick. Okay, so I'm going to try and do this seriously, guys, with my average skill. I'm going to see how fast I can get through a uh, silver lock. Now, this is where it goes... Getting it to move is not the difficult part. It's having those extra seconds. So we're just getting another, just another second. Okay, so the, the extra second makes a difference, but where you need those extra uses is where a lot of the times the guys are going to be able to unlock it because of luck. Okay. Because they're just going to get to the sweet spot, luckily. But as you can see, the, it's moving a lot easier for me than what it used to move. Okay? But that's what the extra use is there for. So that when you when you turn it and it stops there at the end, that you can just adjust it slightly. Okay? But you can see that I'm getting to the sweet spot much easier now. Okay? Much, much easier. So let's just go for this. I went the wrong way there. There we go. Okay. So that's a silver one. And then let's go to a gold one. I have to make my movements very small, guys, because a gold one sweet spot is very small. And it does glitch out like that sometimes. And that's one thing that I'm going to do. Um, I'm just going to put my graphics my video settings to 100 a lot of people put it to 50 and you'll see even if you go to 50 okay um your world might look ugly but when you go into the mini game it doesn't make such a major difference it just makes things it's just in case there's any fps dip okay the fps dip can maybe cost you you know cost you a pick as you can see we're getting the sweet spot quite easily Because of our advanced lock picking skill, and then if we, of course, if we go to advanced plus, you know, it's going to be even better. But I'm just using a small spot because the spot is so small. I don't really have the time to go looking, you know, everywhere. I don't have the time to go from here. Okay, if you've got, if you've got the time to do that, I don't really want to use my whole mouse pad, you know. So I'm just, I'm just focusing on a small spot. Oh, that was close. That was close. It's just the uses that got me there. But you can see, even with gold, we're getting to the... And I just went the wrong way there. Even with gold, we're getting to... Yeah? We're getting to move it. Even with my small little movements, yeah? But of course, if you can get... If you can get to the sweet spot faster, then it gives you more uses to fine-tune it. You know, like when the lock moves... If I didn't take four or five uses to get it to move like this, there we go, okay? If I don't use a lot of uses to get to the sweet spot, then I can use those seven uses that we know we have to, to fine tune it, you know, to finesse it. And that is the big difference, guys. We're only getting one more second, but your sweet spot gets a lot bigger, trust me. 
I have even noticed this on opening lockers in the police station. I have noticed this in the kill box, especially the police station, like where you wear gloves. Um, opening lockers in the police station, you'll, you'll get to times where you feel, oh yeah, I'm not going to make it, you know, where you're actually struggling to find that sweet spot. But as soon as you remove the gloves, you, f you find the sweet spot a lot, a lot, a lot faster, okay? So again, remember go guys, don't wear any gloves. If you're getting shocked to death, you can wear the rubber gloves. The shock protection is going to damage the rubber gloves, so you can't use the rubber gloves forever. The shock protection will damage the rubber, rubber gloves. But if you want to have your success as high as possible, take the damage and try and get to that sweet spot as fast as possible. Okay? Um, and don't worry about the videos that you see where guys do it very, very quickly. Okay? There's um, a lot of people can spam the lock picking skill, which I will show you in the um, skill leveling guide. I will show you how to, you know, um upgrade your lock picking very fast but guy uh, you know a person that dedicates a month to it like two hours a day he can get to advanced plus okay and then his sweet spot gets very very big so if someone's willing um you know to do that to spend a month just practicing on the lock picking practice tool he'll get to advanced plus and then it will look very very easy to, to you you know when you watch their videos and not a lot of people will show you insane um, puppet diffusal skills. And um, they did when the puppets had too much time, you know, too much time for you to diffuse it. But these days, you know, the, you won't get it such a lot because it is, it is really, it, it's really time consuming to upgrade your demolition skill. But in any case, let's get to the next skill, boys. Okay, so now we're going to look at the driving skill, okay, and anything past basic is great for me, okay, as long as you've got basic guys, you're going to be able to drive very nicely, and uh, actually when I get to advanced, I crash a lot more, I damage my vehicle a lot more, so, but, you know, a medium is a nice, is a nice spot for me, but of course the more you drive, the more you're going to level up your skill, okay? And of course, the better you're going to handle your car. But no skill is where the main problem is, okay? So here we've got um, no skill in driving, okay? Zero skill in driving. And this is where the problem comes in. So when you find a vehicle in game, it's going to have very little battery power, uh, might have very little fuel, you know, its health will be down as well, but a lot of the time your battery power is going to be your main problem. And you will see now, when I try to start the vehicle with W, it's going to dra start draining the battery. Look at how the battery is going down. Okay. And look at, look at, look at how I'm struggling with the, with the, and I'm going to stall the vehicle. Okay, so that's the main thing. I'm going to stall all the time. I'm going to struggle to start the vehicle. And a lot of the times, I'll basically drain the battery. You know, while I'm trying to start the vehicle. So that, th those are the big things. Your handling is very difficult. And, um, you know, it's quite difficult to handle the vehicle. You're going to stall a lot. You're going to struggle to start the vehicle, which can end up you dying. And then this, the second thing is the vehicle only travels 60 kilometers per hour. Okay? Which is not that good because a quad travels at 40 kilometers per hour. Okay? So, if you are stalling and this is your max speed, it's quite... It's quite easy for a person to aim at you and kill you at this speed. Okay? So the biggest thing about driving is you st you struggle to start the vehicle. You stall constantly. Okay? Like that. And you're very, very, very slow. Okay? That's the big thing. And trust me, guys. I have tried to start damaged vehicles with... Um, with no driving skill and it was it's 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 really not good it's really really not good the biggest advice i can give you is if you ever get a car started drive it as much as possible every single day 
so that you can get that driving skill to basic at least okay and get a little bit more speed going and um, do you want to lock it up in a garage immediately yes but since we're just covering the skills this is um no driving skill okay 62 kilometers per hour stalling all the time you know using battery power every single time we want to start it and it's really somebody can hear me trying to start the vehicle now you know and that's the thing if i keep on stalling with the vehicle someone can kill me while i'm trying to start the vehicle now let's look at advanced driving skill okay guys once again if we look at our um, attributes and skills no skills everything is on average okay um we're not really trying to change anything here so let's go into a vehicle with advanced with an advanced driving skill okay and okay so we get the car started quickly even if we slow down and we speed up and we turn and we slow down and we're driving reverse okay absolutely no stalling okay the biggest the biggest times that you're going to stall with the vehicle is up a hill so we're going to go up a hill here okay so that's the first thing the safety the speed at starting a vehicle because you 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 charge the battery as you're driving so getting in with advanced driving any vehicle you get if that vehicle's got a little bit of battery power you will be able to start it and you're not going to drain the battery and then sit with the battery problem okay that's the that that's the big thing and you'll be able to get to a fuel station much faster to put fuel in okay because like we saw the first one was um the first one was 62 yeah max max speed and as soon as you get to advanced driving you can have a lot of fun um the vehicle is is quite a you know it's quite difficult to control with um with basic um or no driving skill okay but as soon as we get to advanced the handling of the vehicle is is very very responsive okay very very responsive you can slide into corners you can drift by using the 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 the, the space bar button okay i have trained to drive like a rally driver for quite some time okay so i definitely i've definitely learned some skills okay and if you guys want an extra skill sliding the first time is not a problem you know holding in your space bar to slide the first time is not a problem but a lot of you struggle to correct it after it starts to slide so then you just press the space bar again okay that's all you just press that space bar again to get to get your car aligned okay to where it needs to go instead of just holding in the forward key but in any case what we need to do here now is look at the top speed so from 62 kilometers per hour Whoa! Okay. <laughs> speed, speed adds to the fun. I can tell you guys what's the top speed, but I'd rather show you guys. I know, I know, I know, I know. I want to make the video shorter. Uh, I need a highway. I need a highway. Where am I? I'll be back now boys I'll be back now okay so here we go boys we've got a nice um, clean path in front of us that's a lot of puppets we've got a nice long road here so let's see what is this vehicle what is your top speed with advanced driving Here we go, 150, 155. Okay, 
okay? We're not going to break 155. We might go to 156, but we're not going to break 155. And I've tested... I've tested the vehicles, guys. With a tractor, you don't really gain much speed at all, okay? The tractor's speed from no skill to advanced, there isn't really a major difference, okay? But with the SUVs and the pickup trucks, 155 is your max speed. And... Yeah, I know that for a fact. But just for insurance sake, let's see... Let's see what's the max speed quickly with the with the quad. Let's see, can we can we can we spawn a track? Can we spawn a track to you? Let's see. Tractor. There we go. Spawn a tractor with advanced driving. The biggest thing about the tractor is the inventory space. Because the quad hasn't got a lot of inventory space. So yeah, guys, like I say, like I say, even with that bars driving, 46 kilometers per hour is the max speed that you're gonna get, so. You're only taking this guy out for the inventory space because he's going to get you killed a lot of the time, okay? And when you drive with a tractor, go off-road, boys. Go off-road. Even on my server, if you guys didn't know, my server is Survival Evolved, okay? We've got a great community on there, very helpful. Um, I play on there every single day. Um, we've got two, two, time, two times the amount of vehicles, just... So that we can interact a lot more because um, if the vehicles, you know, if there's not vehicles available for people, then the interaction happens a lot less. So not a lot of vehicles, just twice the amount of official. Um, so yeah, Survival Evolved, you know, if you want to come check it out. It's the one with the um, two times or yeah, three times puppet numbers and two times AI damage. Okay, but let's quickly spawn in a quad. I know the quad's no skill speed is 40, but I haven't, I haven't looked at the top speed for quite some time. I mean, I've driven them, I just haven't really focused on it, okay? And yeah, if you guys notice a little bit of lag now and then, it's only because I'm playing with the render resolution on 200%, okay? Just for you guys, just for you guys, okay? I play on 100% usually, but yeah, I put it on 200% for you. Okay, dude, this, um, this order is taking a bit long. What about C? There we go. Okay, so I know with no skill, this is 40 kilometers per hour. And you're, even with no skill, you start quads quite easily. Okay, so if you're scared of getting killed, you won't really have a problem starting a quad. Okay, a quad seems to be much more forgiving. And as we can see, top speed with the quad is 99. I think on a downhill, we're probably going to reach 100. If I'm right. Yep, we're going to reach 100. So it's got a max speed of 100. And, you know, if you want to choose between a tractor and a quad, guys, take the quad. Okay, the quad is much the quad is much easier, okay, to go off-road off with. Uh, we have chased down one or two people on our server that wasn't a quad. But at the end of the day, they're not utilizing the the advantages that a quad has okay a quad can drive over a little stone where a vehicle can't okay a vehicle's gonna get stuck on the stone but i can drive over it so am i gonna get hurt yes but is the is the vehicle behind me maybe gonna get stuck yes that's a very very strong possibility and i need to use the bushes you know to get away from the vehicle and a vehicle's gonna catch me overall so if i don't think i'm gonna lose the vehicle okay i just need to go over something that it can't go over 
And as soon as I think it's going to get stuck or it's going to lose me, I need to press the F button as soon as possible and get off it. Okay? That's going to be my biggest weapon. Getting off and taking the fight heads, head on. And you don't want to take a fight head on in the open. You can see I'm driving to a rock now or a gate or something. Okay? Please don't get out of your vehicle in the open. You're going to get... <laughs> You're going to get road killed, okay? Again, I'm giving tips here that's not concise to this guide, but that's me, boys. That's me. So, yes, 100, 155 kilometers per hour from 40 to 155 with the SUVs and the pickup trucks, from 40 to 100 with a quad, and then a tractor, I think it's from 40 to 46. Um, you know, tractor doesn't really matter. It's going to be slow, and you're using it for the inventory space. Let's move on to demolition. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so now we take the wire cutters. And now we're going to see how much time we've got here. Disarm it with a wire cutter. Three seconds, boys. That's all I want to show you. Three seconds. Now, have I defused... A bomb in the kill box in three seconds, yes, but only when it's very easy and I'm ready. Okay, he was close to his end there. Okay, can you defuse a bomb in three seconds? Yes, if the wires are perfect, very easy to see, you know, they're not crossing over each other, they go directly to the other side. Yes, I can defuse a bomb in three seconds, okay? Am I willing to die? No, 20 times. Or 10 times in a row. Or 5 times in a row for that one time. I'd say more like 10 or 20 times. Am I willing to die 20 times, you know, to get that, you know, to get to, the, to defuse that puppet. And use the fame points. That is why a random spawn is so important. I'm just giving tips here all the time. That's why random spawns are so important. Because if you don't make random spawns expensive, or if you don't add any cost to random spawns, then a guy can just respawn, get a wire cutter, and try and defuse. Respawn, get a wire cutter, try and defuse a, a, you know, a puppet. And he can kill he can kill the puppet with a, with a spear, guys. I don't need, um, you know... Let's me just, you know, yeah, he has to get a weapon as well. No, he doesn't have to get a weapon. This is what you, what you, um, server creators have to think about. And these are the things that I think about when I did my settings on Survival Evolve. Okay. So, spawn item spear. Okay. Just a wooden spear. Just a wooden spear. Okay. You do not need a special weapon to. That's freaking great. You do not need a special weapon. You need a spear and a wire cutter. Okay? That's all you need. And you can do this all day. That's what people can do. If they do not get charged fame points for um, you know, spawning randomly, or they get charged too little, or they get charged no skill points, you know, or no fame points, it starts becoming a problem, especially for big clans. Okay? So let's just go here, yeah, spawn zombie, vest. Okay, that was a fail, but you guys get the point. Okay, you guys get the point. <laughs> you get the point! You can peg him in the head. Okay, you can peg him in the head. Okay, now let's go three seconds. Um... Grenade damage isn't too far, okay? When you plant bombs at your base, the damage is going to be further as well, but I'm just going to prove that with a grenade. Let's go to advanced demolition. Okay, guys, so we're still at... Um, advanced demolitions, okay? And the second reason why advanced demolitions is important is you can't craft anything more for now on the 0 0.5 update. You can't craft anything else in um, in advanced because as you can see, all my crafting is grayed out, okay? So the only thing I'm getting at basic here is the explosive arrows, 
Okay, or crossbow bolts. I'm getting the pressure cooker, the pipe bomb, the cartridge trap, and the two, and the motion sensor, and the laser detonator. Okay. And then I can craft the improvised claymore and the C4 bomb. Okay. So you need at least medium demolition if you want to use the C4 components to craft the C4 bomb to raid a base. Okay. You need medium demolition. Although getting to medium demolition is not the end of the world, which I will show you in the um, in the leveling guide that we're going to do, okay? But the big thing for me is, except for the fact that your senses gives you, like, you can't, you can quickly see if you can put a sensor on something. So the improvised mine, no sensor. No sensor, no sensor, no sensor. The claymore you can put a sensor on, okay? You can't put a sensor on the C4 trap, you can just arm it. And you can put a, you can put a um, trigger on the, on the improvised claymore. And you can put a sensor on the, on the pressure cooker, okay? And you can put a trigger on um, the pipe bomb, okay? And in this guide, I'm going to show you guys some great tricks when it comes to protecting your base and raiding a base. Okay? i um, going to show you guys some really good secrets. But when it comes to the trigger, this is how big a trigger is. Um, so it's quite big. The only difference with the claymore is at the back of it, um, it won't trigger when you stand behind it. It's only going to trigger when you get into the cone. It's almost like a mutant. It will trigger when you come into the side entrance or the front, okay? So its cone is basically looks like this, okay? It's a line with a big cone in front of it, okay? Where you're going to blow up. You can stand behind a claymore. It's not going to blow up. And here again, you can stand behind this thing, okay? Let me just check there. There's a grenade there. Yes, yes, you can stand here because you can see the grenade is going to blow this way. So it won't trigger the trap on this side, okay? But with a pressure cooker, pressure cooker, of course, takes a lot to craft. But in any case, we're looking at the demolition skill, okay? So your, your trigger range is bigger, okay? And your crafted um, explosives do more damage. I don't know if it's my imagination, but I have been thrown... I have thrown grenades with no demolition skill, and I've thrown grenades with with an advanced um, demolition skill. And sorry, I can't help myself here. I just can't help myself. I can't help myself. We kill the horse. That looks like we did. Damn. So yes. I don't know if it's true, but I feel I have imagined, you know, that grenades do more damage, especially when um, when I'm wearing the the biggest vest. You know, uh, the big vest. But it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me that a normal grenade will do more damage dependent on your demolition skill. It doesn't make any sense to me that an item that you can find in the world can do more damage just because of your um, demolition skill. I know a weapon can do more damage, you know, because you swing it harder. But no, a gun won't do more damage, you know. Um, and I don't think, a gren I can't see that a grenade can do more damage. But in my tests, the, I just, guys, the, the perfect ball is going to have advanced demolition. Okay? And except for the fact that you can defend your base much better because the trigger range, because the trigger range is so freaking wide. Except for the fact that you can get really creative when protecting your base. Um, and remember, someone must have a high demolition skill to disarm that trap. Okay, they don't have to have any skill to disarm your spike traps and the other things. 
You know, these other traps that you create. They don't need a skill to disarm the stake pit or the barbed spike trap. Okay, they don't need any skill. But they need a skill to disarm um, your bombs with the triggers on them. Okay, so it has a big effect on bases, but the biggest effect that it has is on the kill box because it gives you an extra second in the kill box. Okay, from um, no skill to advanced, it's going to give you an extra second that you can use in the kill box. And the biggest thing is it's going to give you an extra second to use on a puppet okay so let's look at that quickly it's gonna spawn in m9 pistol we're spawning m9 magazine and then i'm just gonna spawn in nine millimeter yeah come on come on come on <clears throat> Nine millimeter. I'm gonna put this this stuff on the ground. Put that there. Load the magazine. Okay. Then we get the wire cutter. Add that to the quick slot, just to be a little bit fast. Add the pistol to the quick slot as well. Okay. And now, remember the puppet only had three seconds, guys. The, the puppet only had three seconds. Okay. Poor zombie. <laughs> okay. And now we're going to three. Right there, we're getting an extra second, okay? Ah, uh, now, let me do this. Space to start. That's my first attempt, boys. That is my first attempt. Now with three seconds, I will fail nine out of 10 times, okay? With three seconds, I will fail nine out of nine out of ten times. With advanced demolition, I will succeed at least three to four out of ten times. Okay? I will succeed. If it if it doesn't give me a crow's nest, if the wires don't cross each other too badly, I when I practice with my practice bomb to upgrade my demolition skill. Um I'm hitting, um, when you practice on the practice bomb, you only get six, six seconds. So I defuse, I practice on that bomb and I've got two seconds left most of the time. I also, I've also got one second left some of the time. But as you guys can clearly see, this was just a random try. Okay, I give you my word, this was a random try. I haven't done this 10 times. This is just a random try. And with 10 seconds, you can get C4 parts, guys. That is the biggest reason for advanced demolition. Okay, in my personal opinion. So it helps you to get into the kill box quicker because it gives you more time on um, opening up the electronic doors and it helps you to defuse bombs, you know, um, quicker to get C4 parts. Okay. And just overall, it's just overall a very good skill. Remember, you don't lose time when you when you can't get through the locks in the kill box. But you do lose time for every door that you don't open up with the first try. Every time you... I can't give every all the secrets away just yet, guys. Just now I've done a lot of testing and we're going to learn everything in this guide. Demolition will be advanced on my perfect character guide that I will be doing at the end of the series. Okay? Just know that. So, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you've got anything extra to add to this guide, leave it down in the comments below as well. Thank you.
Okay, boys, the next skill we're going to look at is um, throwing. Okay, as you can see, I've got no throwing skill. And I have tested this at the shooting range. And with my testing, I'd say you can throw about 30% further. Okay, which helps because if you see an enemy there, you know, um, let's say there's a guy there. Um, if I can't get the grenade to him, but I can always, I can always gauge my distance because what I do now is I add a grenade to my quick slot. I um, activate the throwing mode, you know, so as soon as I press the three on the quick shot, it goes to my throwing mode and I can gauge where I throw a grenade just by changing the height, you know, so I can throw a grenade here. Okay. So that I, you know, I can throw here or there or there or there or there. The difference is how far can I throw a grenade? Okay. So what I'm going to do now is first of all, I'm going to aim for that rock in front of us. Let's take a rock that we will always notice. So if we align up those rocks there, we can line up that rock. So I'm just going to put the cursor, the little white dot on that rock. And then I'm going to just press G for a normal grenade throw. Okay. There's a, that was about halfway. Okay. Not very far at all. Okay. So now let's aim for just above, yeah, just above that tree. Okay, so just above that tree, we can get there. If we go a little, let's go above that tree. <coughs> okay, so we're getting to the rock. Okay, we're getting to the rock. Let's use that tree again. Okay, so here we go, boys. Again, very, very average character with no extra skills added. It's just our throwing is on advanced okay so as always let's start with the grenades i'm just going to add the grenade to the quick slot add it to quick slot activate the throwing mode press the quick slot button and now i can just press g from now on okay so what we're going to do is we're going to it when we threw it to the rock we only got halfway let's see how far we're going to get now halfway is still about the same and now, if we, we're standing more or less the same place, if we throw it to above the tree. <laughs> not a lot of difference, guys, not a lot of difference. So clearly the height, the height is a very big thing here. If you want to... If you want to hit someone with a grenade, but you can't go too high because if you go too high, then the grenade's going to explode before it hits the ground. Okay, so you have to practice whether you play a lot in first person or third person, practice what distance, what height, you know, you're going to aim at to make sure it at least hits the ground. So there isn't a massive difference there. Okay. Now, when we look at the spear, the spear almost reached the end. So let's see if the spear is going to um, reach the end here. No, more or less exactly the same. So now let's look at the throwing where it's going to throw. One, two, three. Lands more or less the same place. Okay, with an advanced throwing skill. So with the test that I did, I felt I was throwing 30, about 30 to 20% further. Okay, um, clearly with this revised testing that I'm doing here, um, we don't see a lot of difference. But of course, I was throwing at the, at the, you know, at the shooting range. But again, I wasn't impressed. You know, it was like 20% further. But I mean, I can control it with the height, the clearly we're not getting the arc anymore you know the throwing arc we're not getting the throwing arc so at the moment throwing is just not a viable option for me okay um upgrading the skill is good it's always good to have a character that's great at all skills and that's why after the skill guide we're going to go into the skill leveling guide always good to have a 
a character that's very strong at everything, you know? Uh, but for now, um, there isn't a really viable skill for me. But again, the big thing about this guide is that we help each other as a community, okay? I am not Einstein when it comes to scum. I am just very, very aggressive when it comes to testing various things and pushing my character's limit in every single aspect when it comes to a game. So when I'm not learning anything, I'm not really, you know, then I get bored. So I need to be pushing the limits of any game. And that's how I get to the, you know, that's why I love to make guides and help you guys out there and get us all to a level playing field. But if any people out there knows of how throwing is helping you now, you know, since, 0 .5, since the 0 0.5 update, if you guys have ever seen anywhere where the throwing really helps you, Leave it down in the comments below, okay? And uh, and yes, all we have all we have left now is stealth. So let's see how does stealth help you. Okay, guys, we're at the last skill, which is stealth. Okay, um, this character has got no points in stealth. Again, very average, right through the bank. We're just looking at stealth itself. So when it comes to stealth, you guys have seen the generic videos where you're making less sound. Okay, of course, the sound that you make is dependent on the gear that you're wearing. Okay, so if I run now on the on on the sand like this, okay, and I can do something very simple to alleviate that. I can, you know, I can make a little bit less noise just by removing whatever I've got on my feet. You won't hear it very well, you know, on on this, but I've noticed the difference, you know, just by doing that. And if I remove all my gear, that's the quietest I can ever be. You'll you'll hear when you run through a forest. You almost sound like a sniper now. Okay? You are a lot, you are a lot quieter. Oh! That was close. Okay, so we know the generic part of it, okay? You're making less noise. Of course, that helps you. Less noise, you know? Um, players won't detect you as easily. So, you know, that's a very... That's a very easy thing. Practically, how does it help you with puppets and mix? Okay, so let's look at it. We're going to spawn... We're just going to spawn the first puppet, okay? The spawn command still calls them zombies. You devs are traders, eh? you call them puppets, you want them to call us puppets, but then you still let us spawn zombies, right? Eh? <laughs> okay, let's just, let's just take the fat police, okay? He's not looking at me, I'm not moving, he doesn't know I'm here. Okay, he doesn't know I'm here. So I can stand here, if he's not looking at me, if I'm not in his cone, he's not going to know about me until I go and get into his cone, okay? So let's just sort him out quickly. Okay, so now let's see how movement affects it. So he's got his back to me. Now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make sure I walk. I'm gonna walk backwards. Okay, now he, he hears me immediately. He hears me immediately. Goodness gracious, bro. Can't believe you survived that. What's that? Yes, sir, you're good, eh? What's that? What's that? What? <laughs> yes, sir, you're tough, eh? Let's see. If I just walk away from you, you, you. You shouldn't be able to hit me if I just walk away from you. And then I can just put my thing on there. I'm going to give you guys tips all the time, boys. All the time I'm going to give you tips. Okay? Okay, guys. We're back with the exact same test. Okay? So, we went from no skill to advanced. We are at um, advanced stealth now. So, let's see if we hear something different. I definitely hear something different. The sound is, the volume is exactly the same, guys. 
I definitely hear something different on on that. And if we take all our clothes off, by just double clicking on everything, that is a lot softer, boys. You can always rewind, but this is a lot softer. We're gonna be like ninjas on the grass. We like we like the predator, boys. We like the predator. That is that is very soft, guys. You can still hear the wind. Is the same volume. But um, yeah, we move a lot more silently. So it's going to be very difficult for another player, okay, to detect us. Now let's spawn in the puppet again. Not the. F um, yes, guys. And even with the skinny, even with the skinny female, okay? You guys might think, no, you can't stay away from them, you know, um, when they fast. No, even when they fast, they're not going to be able to hit you, okay? Oh. Oh, it looks like sometimes they will. But again, as soon as you turn around, doesn't matter what they are, you know. You let them swipe, you hit them. You let them swipe, you hit them. Okay. Okay, so we, we are naked now, which isn't very good. Um, yeah, we didn't do the test when we were naked. So that's not very realistic. Let's put on all our clothes here quickly. There we go. Let's put on our orange shirt as well. Okay. So now, let's spawn in the puppet that we spawned in last time. Let's make sure we stand approximately at the same place. So let's spawn in zombie, the fat one. Okay, so clearly we're behind him. He can't see us. Okay, and we're walking. And he can't hear us. We have to be, we have to get quite close to him, okay, before he hears us. Let's spawn in another one quickly, just to make sure. Okay, so we're behind him, and he doesn't hear us, okay, we can walk behind him, he doesn't hear us. That helps us with stealth a lot, okay. Again, it's his vision, his vision is the main thing. His vision is definitely, definitely the main thing. Okay? So, yes. In my experience, um, I can sneak, you know, past puppets very, very easily. It does help you when I am... Um, mostly it helps me. I mean, you don't really know what the other player is hearing. So, I don't really know how much of an advantage I have over the other player. Because I can't hear what he's hearing. But I mean, I can hear I can hear how loud I am. Okay, without a stealth skill, you are very loud. But I mean, the, the, how loud you are is much more dependent on what you're wearing. You know, if you very if you if you've got a heavy load on you, you know, if your backpack is full and everything, that cancels it out in any case. Then you're gonna make noise. You know, every single thing that you wear on you is gonna make more noise. Um, so if you want to be as silent as possible, you know, be naked. But um, that's the biggest effect on sound for me. But then the stealth, as you can clearly hear, the stealth does help you if you're not wearing a lot. And you can see with the puppet, you know, you can sneak a lot better. Now let's go look at those megs, which apparently bothers some of you. Um, okay, let's be honest. They've all killed us, okay? They've all killed us. <laughs> okay, we are back with the stealth skill being tested okay we've got zero stealth and everyone knows the boot camp okay absolutely everyone knows the boot camp um i'm just gonna spawn myself in a katana because i don't want to be bothered by the puppets and there's just a there's just my friend dull server that i'm doing the tests on if you guys want to come join all of us we're on survival evolved okay not God mode, man. Just, 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 just spawn. Spawn the kata. Spawn the katana. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's just look for a gap. We're going to play with this meg here. Okay, so we've got no... We've got absolutely no um, stealth skill. Okay. So let's see what we can do if we're behind the me the me okay that's the big thing you want to be behind the me 
I forgot this is the only opening so we're going to be visible to other mechs here which isn't a great idea. Are you going to turn around now? Okay, now you're going to turn around. Come here, come here, come here. Ah, come on. Yeah, okay, okay, I'll, I'll be done now. I'll be done now. Okay, just relax. Just relax. No, I don't want some of your cookies. Okay, he's red now. I don't want really want him to be red, but he's red now. But it's fine, guys. We're still going to look at how the sound affects him. Okay, so now he's going to walk away. Okay. So now, really? When are you going to turn around? When are you going to turn around? Okay, you're not really going to turn around, eh? Hello boys, how's it going? What's that? Whoa, yeah, you fast, eh? Huh? Oh, whoa. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. There we go. Okay. Just proving to you again, guys, if you stay calm, they can't hit you. Yeah, if you just stay calm, they can't hit you. But of course, you don't want to do that all day. But you can walk away from them and wait for them to swipe and then you hit them. And then you, yeah, you just wait for them to swipe. Every time they swipe, you hit. Every time they swipe, you hit. Okay, PV, PVE 101, okay, but now, okay, I want to walk behind this guy, I just want to see when he detects me, okay, I'm going to start with jogging, yeah, we're going to start with a light jog and see when he detects us. Actually, we're at the first bunker, so I'm going to wait for him to come this way again. Now, when it comes to vision, stealth doesn't help you with vision at all, okay? But what stealth does help you with is... Meg's not hearing you. Okay, and there he heard me. No, there he clearly heard me. Okay, so a puppet is going to hear us when we move, you know, when we walk behind him. And a Meg is going to hear us if we jog too close to him. Okay, he's going to hear us if we jog too close to him. Now let's go look at advanced stealth. And of course, we all know about the sound, okay? We make less sound. Okay, guys, we're back. I'm going to be much quicker with this. I'm definitely not going to take all the time that I took last time. Definitely going to do this a lot faster. I am going to jog, just want to see where this guy stops, use the bush as cover. Only reason I'm using the boot camp is because the building sheltered me, okay? So now, now I can run, I can run behind this guy, okay, I can jog behind this guy.
I want to get even closer to him. Okay, so he's not turning around. I'm jogging, I'm very close to him, and he's not turning around. Okay? That is the biggest thing, guys. Of course, the more you're wearing, the easier they will detect you. But for me, that's by far the biggest thing. Okay? By far. By far the biggest thing is this. This is for me the biggest thing. Okay? That I'm jogging now, and he doesn't hear me. Okay? Okay, they are literally touched. Okay? I literally touched him there. But that's the main thing, boys. When you're running into a bunker, okay, you will be able to sprint much sooner. Yeah? When he's a certain distance away from you, you'll be able to sprint much sooner. You'll be able to jog as soon as he turns around because you're not worried about the sound that you're making. Okay? So for me, stealth has a, stealth has a very big effect on stealth okay not really the attribute but the skill has a lot of effect on stealth itself helps you with players so that they you know that you can hear them before they hear you helps you with puppets you know so that you don't get detected by puppets too soon and definitely lets you get past mix much easier that's the that's the number one point for me is mix boys like always boys if you have got anything to add to the dexterity guide please leave it in the comments down below okay let's help each other to get to a level playing field i hope you enjoyed this guide tomorrow we are going to be covering um intelligence okay and then we're going to get to some of the exciting stuff okay then we're going to jump into the skill leveling guide which will only be one video i'll be showing you guys that extremely fast and then, you know, we're going to be doing a looting guide and a base building guide and a raiding guide and defending your base guide and, you know, everything that I could think of to teach you guys, I will be teaching you in this series. Um, I know the updates are coming out, but as, lo as long as we've got the foundation, as soon as the update comes out, I will calculate the update, see what changes have been made, and then give you guys revised, you know, update that the information so that you guys know how to utilize the skills to the best of your ability if you did like this video do me a favor and just click the sub button and the bell button to be notified of future videos i hope you have guys have a great day and see you tomorrow